<coughs> so another journey can begin. <coughs> so what I'm gonna talk about today. really don't know it usually takes <clears throat> a little bit of time to to get uh, the vo get the voice warmed up and maybe Today I'm going to try to have a, a big and uh, musical voice which can move a little bit up and down and uh, be quite melodic and not too boring and try also to express the same attitude through my bodily language because after all all of the language which arises, arises out of the body. So, the bodily language in this sense is the primary language. And this language can be a medium for any kind of transmission of various insights. And some of the insights can be insights as to hidden opportunities in the life circumstances where you are and uh, some paths which might lead to the realization of those hidden opportunities as a human being in the crowd of human beings I am in some sense one of the seers, the observers, the visionaries. That's why I'm also making this video series to share some of those visions, to try sharing them in a form that uh, makes them meaningful or accessible in some way with the hope that someday and some way they will come of use. While walking along these paths, one now and then comes across other walkers on the paths. And those are the moments when a slight detour can be beneficial. Just for the peace, the peace of mind. Here I found an area which is uh, it's a very fun area and uh, full of possibilities I don't think I've ever been in just this place before but the view is splendid, it's rich and uh, can uh, inspire all kinds of uh, journeying in the lands of the mind All right. <laughs> so what to what to think about today, what to investigate today. 
in, in this sort of uh, forest philosophy series, that was actually one of the first names that I was uh, thinking about about the series. To just call it uh, forest philosophy, because it's a kind of philosophy which is taking place while I'm walking through the forest. And the initial idea, which uh, still very much is alive, is that by walking here through the forests, it's almost as if I'm consulting the, the wisdom of the wild. That may very well actually be uh, another name you could have to a series, the wisdom of the wild. And uh, sort of being in the wild, being with the, the old trees and the ecosystems and uh, you know, this very amazing uh, views in all directions. That this could be a kind of vehicle for the mind. A sort of uh, helping hand to move the thoughts on and uh, really let it flow out. And um, that has, you know, as far as what I've done so far, I think that is clearly the case. That these are the kind of surroundings which, which facilitate a clear mind with uh, many interesting ideas flowing out. <clears throat> and that's really the purpose of the whole thing. <clears throat> Still, when you walk in these areas, everything you see is a work of art. And it's not just a work of art, it's like the most amazing work of art you could ever see. Like if you were growing up in an art museum and you saw new expeditions, exhibitions coming out every week and you were really into it and then suddenly you found yourself here, you would think you were just in paradise because you're at this place with Everything is art, where it's just art anywhere you look, and it's three-dimensional, and it's moving, and it's living, and breathing, and, uh, whoa, it is really like you are in an adventure world adventure world that's that's the way I feel right now this is like being in an adventure world a total adventure world so that's why it's such a great place to be making these videos because I can just walk around now I've even got my hands free I found a, a nice little method for that and uh, I got this little thing around my neck and uh, <coughs> the iPad mini can rest in this place and uh, that, that I can just walk and talk and have my hands free and that's the best working position which is as far as I'm concerned <clears throat> so it's just to walk a little here and there like this area here is uh, it's one of the many areas I really love and here last week I just 
walked through here and it was this day where it was just the right kind of light and it was almost like this silvery grey surface on top of everything and it was just like these uh, shining layers of crystals and the uh, small small drops of liquid on the branches and in front of me my girlfriend was walking in this amazing outfit and just occurred to me that my whole life was just worth it just to be able to have that one walk so this walk here is an extra you can say my life has already been worth it so now I can just totally enjoy it all and you know be in love with existence and try to be involved in useful activity as an expression of that love of existence maybe this is the moment where I just struck upon a theme which may be something to explore <coughs> the love of existence and its meeting point in useful activity useful activity as an expression of love of existence useful activity being the kind of activity which benefits life in this world and which opens vast possibilities for greatness and beauty and splendor and wonder and really just total awesomeness this of course is the primary goal of the entire whatever it is from my point of view so in that sense I'm a pretty simple person and as I mentioned before since I'm already here and since what I'm a part of is just so amazingly, infinitely, unbelievably spectacular and cool and awesome and just outrageously wonderful in every way, you know, with all the goodies and daddies included, then I just choose to love it all exactly as it is and try to live my life as an expression of that that's what brought me now as I just strolled here to this viewpoint of constructive activity or useful activity as a way of expressing this in other words I wanna walk around being totally in love with everything can I somehow do that in a way which <laughs> in a way which supports life a life supportive way of being I mean, if, if you're going to express a total love of existence, I mean, it seems natural to find a kind of life-supportive way of being. So now we're suddenly right into the good old areas of ethics and action and strategies and habits and daily patterns and regularities and behavior and all of that stuff. How to behave, how to be, what kind of action 
to have in the world. The eternal questions that keep on asking and keep on being answered. Being answered by the way you are. The way you are being your own answer to the eternal question. Now there were a few weeks ago, I think it was about two weeks ago, I had this insight that I wanted my whole life to be a dance. And it's a very natural insight because after all, when you look at it closely it becomes clear that that's what the whole existence is already. It is a very great big dance where everything is dancing together with everything else through an endless space and where forms are emerging and shifting and disappearing and re-emerging and where there's certain similarities in everything while at the same time everything is totally unique and different from anything that's ever been before or ever will be again So everything is like a universal dance where it's all moving, it's all shifting, it's all out playing. So I want to be a dancer within that. I mean, I am already a dancer within it already. So why not then take the identity which is as close to reality as possible. Being the dancer within the larger dance and to see the whole purpose of my existence as the wish to find the one dance which is mine to make And if I can find that one dance, then everything else will fall into place in its own kind of way. It must fall into place and it will fall into place. And if it falls into place exactly the way I anticipate or similarly, then (coughs) that's something. And if it falls into place very differently from what I anticipate, then that is a surprise. So, my anticipations isn't really a problem. What actually happens isn't really a problem either. The only thing that matters for me is how I conduct my dance. That's all. And if I notice a pattern that other people are responding to me in a way which I don't really want well, if there's anything I'm unhappy about, the only thing I can do is to change my own dance. That's all I can do. It's all that's important. So if I have all my focus on just that, then I have taken responsibility 
for what I can take responsibility for. And if I can take responsibility for just that one dance through space, then I can be totally happy about everything that happens. Because then everything is just raw reality manifesting. And I'm here as an experiencer of it. And... I can just love every second of it. So the one dance goes through every moment, every second, every minute. And of course the seconds and the minutes, that is a kind of way that we are interpreting it all. So in a sense, that is a few of the, the dance moves. The move of constating time and using symbols for measurement. This is another dance move. Every word we say is another dance move. Everything we write on the telephone or on pieces of paper or keyboards everything which uh, is being gestured every time we put on a piece of clothing or take it off every time we get up from the chair and move around on the floor and every breath and every attitude and every way we go through the breath and the attitude and just the whole music of the voice whenever we express sounds all of this are our moves in the one life dance which goes on from we're born and to we die and every day is one chapter of this one life dance and for some people maybe the dance will be very similar in many of the chapters <coughs> for others there can be some great changes along the way changes in style changes in ways of doing it so I think that at the moment maybe this is my favorite metaphor the dance metaphor being a dancer through life being on a dancing journey through the endless space.